The Panasonic Lumix S5 is in my opinion the best value full frame hybrid camera on the market. It not only takes fantastic still images, but the video quality out of this is every bit as good as far more expensive cameras like the Sony FX3, A7S3 and A7 IV all of which I currently have or have owned in the past. Paired with the now great L-mount lens lineup, the Panasonic S5 will give you professional results in any shooting condition. In today's video, I'll discuss why the Panasonic S5 is so underrated and why I ended up with four. <laughs> no kidding, I love this thing. Let's talk about my first impressions of the S5 going back quite some time. I felt slightly underwhelmed with this camera after shooting with the GH5S and GH5. However, that didn't last too long. One thing I love now about this system is is you can get the S series of primes. They're all f1.8, so they're very fast. They're all essentially the same size and weight, which allows them to work really well on a gimbal, and they've got very low focus breathing. So if you're a video shooter, you'll get a kick out of the prime lenses for this particular system. And their lenses are exactly the same build quality and size. There's one thing I can't stand about other brands. They've got like 12 different lens lineups, and none of them match, and they're all kind of all over the place. These all feel very much the same in the hand and they all balance exactly the same if you're a gimbal shooter, so that's really cool. Due to the optical performance of these lenses and the low focus breathing, you can get really great results when shooting video. Let's talk about image quality. The video quality out of the S5 is fantastic. We get 10-bit 422 recording and 14 stops of dynamic range. 10-bit allows for more color information to be captured, resulting in more flexibility when editing. If you want to push the colors around, 10-bit recording makes a whole lot of sense. The S5 also features the full version of Vlog straight out of the box without needing a paid firmware upgrade. Vlog is very easy to edit. You can drop a lot straight on it, get more dynamic range, and grade the footage however you like. The S5 is loaded with a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor and features a dual native ISO that allows for pristine image quality even in low light. The base ISO is listed at 640 and the high base dual ISO is listed at 4000. After shooting some in-studio and outdoor comparisons between the S5 and my Micro Four Thirds cameras, I realized that the overall look of the S5 was really something special. The kit lens performed just as well as my faster prime lenses for Micro Four Thirds, and I noticed a huge difference when it came to dynamic range, especially up against the original GH5. The more I used the Panasonic S5, the more positive feedback I would see on my YouTube videos. Whether I was shooting in vlog and grading the footage, or just getting great out-of-camera results using the natural profile, which is what I tend to live on, on this camera. The color science was also vastly improved over the original GH5 and was slightly better balanced overall than the GH5S, which I love the look of. It has a sort of red look to it. The original GH5 had a green tint. This they got right. Now depth of field isn't everything, but it can improve the look of a very lackluster room like this just by adding a little bit of that subject separation. Part of the other reason why I ended up going for all S5s is where at the time Panasonic had a deal where if you buy one of their kits, you would get a free 50 millimeter F1.8 prime. And this was my most used focal length on my Micro Four Thirds with this 25 millimeter F1.7. But the overall optics on this 1.8 look amazing. The way it renders the background is also very beautiful. And this has become one of my favorite lenses of all time. So to get three of these with three cameras, made a whole lot more sense than buying it separately and having to spend so much more money on just getting the glass. My main lens in that studio is the 35 millimeter F1.8 Prime, and this is a really great lens. It's the perfect focal length for that room. Prior to that, I was using the 15 millimeter F1.7 with the camera slightly closer, and the look isn't even close. It almost looks like the GH5S with that 15 millimeter F1.7 doesn't give me any shallow depth of field when you compare it up against the full frame look. So swapping over made a whole lot of sense for me. Whether or not anyone else really notices it, it's up to you whether you can see a huge difference. This isn't to bash Micro Four Thirds. I still shoot with Micro Four Thirds. I've got a GH6 and a GH5 Mark II, and they're my main handheld cameras. But for a multi-camera setup, the S5 makes so much sense. The slow motion on the Panasonic S5 is what I would consider to be solid and very usable. It supports up to 1080p at 180 frames per second. I don't think 180 frames per second is the nicest image quality. I think the sweet spot is somewhere around 100 or 120p, depending if you're shooting PAL or NTSC footage. The full frame sensor gives you great clean HD slow motion that can be slowed down in camera and put directly in on the timeline. So you don't have to go ahead and adjust it in post. You do lose audio with this, 
but overall it's a really great compromise. I love using this for product shots and the image quality is noticeably better when compared with the GH5 or GH5 Mark II. I think this is because the shutter speed mixed with the sensor on a Micro Four Thirds camera creates more noise, whereas the straight out of camera slow motion on this is vastly improved. The autofocus on the S5 has been fine for my particular use case, but it did take some finessing. I also find that the new lenses work pretty well for standing headshots or product B-roll shots, but it's not always perfect when it comes to tracking. I made an entire video about the S5 autofocus called Decoding the Panasonic Autofocus. If you missed it, I'll link it up in the cards. While I'd love to tell you that this is the perfect camera, there's definitely some trade-offs. The first significant trade-off for me with the S5 was no full-size HDMI port. Bit of a bummer, but I managed to get around this problem by using a dongle that I can highly recommend. I'll link that down in the description. I ended up buying four of them and they've worked without any incident. One thing I can tell you though, not all micro HDMI ports are built the same. These are very sturdy, unlike some of the other cameras I have in my collection. The second biggest trade-off with the S5 is the 30 minute recording limit in the 10 bit modes. This isn't a deal breaker for me. I felt like the 8 bit full frame look was better than the 10 bit micro four thirds look in the studio. And in 8 bit, you can record as long as you want. And I've never had these cameras overheat. Thirdly, the IBIS is not as good as the GH5 Mark II or GH6. It might not even be as good as the original GH5. This is one of the big reasons why I still love Micro Four Thirds. Their IBIS is incredible. Lastly, there's an APS-C crop when shooting 4K60, and this is completely unavoidable. When shooting in HD though, you get the full frame sensor, but if you do want to shoot in 4K, it does crop in by 1.5 times. This is not a deal breaker for me at all. While I wish it had 4K60 8-bit full readout with no recording limits, it is what it is. At the start of the video, I mentioned I was going to talk about why I think the Panasonic Lumix S5 is the most underrated camera on the market. First up, price. You could buy three of these for the same price as the Sony FX3. Secondly, the image quality out of the S5 far surpasses its price point. For example, to compare the same footage in 4K 2425 and 30p up against the Sony FX3, they're basically indistinguishable. Now, this doesn't do 4K 120, and the Sony FX3 has advantages in other ways, but in regular frame rate modes in 4K, this holds up every bit as good. Thirdly, the lens selection at the time of launch wasn't anywhere near as rich as it is now, which is why I really love this system. It goes completely under the radar because I think a lot of people don't realize the S series of primes are as good as they are, and they're very readily available now, which is something that wasn't the case at the time of launch. Another reason why this is a huge advantage over something like the Sony a7C is we can get a sense of redundancy thanks to two SD card slots. So if you plan on shooting a wedding or if you travel and you wanna make sure you don't lose any footage, having a camera with two SD card slots is an absolute no-brainer. So it's pretty clear now why I have four of these for my multi-camera setup. Affordability, when you compare it against other options on the market, image quality, again, when you compare them up against far more expensive cameras, and the overall lens selection now is better than it's ever been. If you wanna check out the Panasonic S5, I'll link it down in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.